So it's got to be one six tall, so the area of the whole thing is one. Uh, let's do this real quick. What's the mean? So your formula's right over there. Yeah, seven. Good. It's ten plus four divided by two. It's seven. It's the thing right in the middle. Seven is right in the middle. It makes sense. The mean should be in the middle. If it's symmetric, the mean will be exactly in the middle. So if you if you realize that, then that formula only makes sense. It's going to be the number right in the middle because it's perfectly symmetric. What's the standard deviation going to be? Well, let's see. Let's just plug it in here. It'll be ten minus four squared divided by twelve square rooted. This kind of comes out nice inside because this is 6 squared is 36 divided by 12. So it's root 3, which I think is 1.7 something. Sorry. 1.732? Sure. Okay. So can somebody tell me, let me bring in something from earlier. What's the maximum and minimum expected value? Yeah, you go up, so you take the mean plus two standard deviations to see the max, and the mean minus two standard deviations to see the min. So this would be like 10.46, and this will be what, 3.54, maybe? <laughs> I don't have a calculator. It's my head. It sometimes works. So, you know, if I... Now, look look at this. This is interesting. Are there any values in the distribution then that would be considered unusual? No. Yes, sir? Why'd you put a 12 at the bottom of the seat? Uh, again, it, it's, it, the derivation just comes out with the 12 as you do the work. It's nothing, if it wasn't there, would you ask me why did I not put a 12 there? No, you wouldn't even know. So it's just, when I calculate this, I have to calculate it using calculus, and the 12 just comes out in the derivative. So would you give us the... I will, that will be sitting on your formula sheet. Will so always yeah. be 12? No, no, yeah. this is for what? What is that for? Uniform distribution. Uniform distribution. <laughs> just like NPQ is a variance for a binomial distribution. Or let's go along with their distributions. Okay. Cool. Hmm. All right. Uh, oh, here's the next piece of good news for you guys. Let's see if we got the right thing. Yeah. And these are things, just so you know, these are things that we normally, we didn't used to do in the old book. But I thought if I had time, I'd try to do them, so I'm okay with cutting them out. So that last, the, the one I made extra credit, we normally don't do geometric distribution, so I was fine with letting it go. We normally don't do exponen ex exponential distribution, that's section 5.3. So that means 5.4 is extra credit, and so is 5. I mean, 4.4 four and 5.3 are both extra credit. Right? I want to give you guys a little good news after apparently frying your brains. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I really didn't mean to. Sometimes I mean to, actually. All right. So here's the last piece of today. Uh, I just want to do a little bit with normal distributions, and then I'll feel pretty good. It's all about making sure I feel good. Was that 5-1? Is it going to be 5-3? 5-1 was an overview of continuous distribution. So they had uniform, exponential, and uh, normal. And they asked very surface questions about And they did ask some questions about probability and uniform. 5-2 is where they got really deep into uniform. That's where they got these formulas here. 
that's the deep intensive look at uniform distributions. Right? Okay, cool. Right. So five one is going to be very surface. What kind of distribution is this? Uniform. Right. So you just got to look at the picture and, and realize what kind of distribution it is. Um, that wasn't how I think you sound, by the way. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so when I have a so. so um, I'm torn. I guess I'll just do this because the other thing's not in the book. There's something called the empirical rule. And this only pertains to... Pertains. Fancy, Jeff. Only pertains to normal... And just a quick side note. I'm not going to do the entire thing because for some reason this book does not do one of my favorite things. And it's something known as Chebyshev's theorem. Or some just call him Chubby Dude. I have no idea if he was chubby. But uh, just a quick side note about Chebyshev's theorem. Because it's kind of interesting, actually. And it leads to empirical. Chebyshev, uh, here's what he said. So if I had a distribution that looks like this, let's say this is ages in Florida. So what is it? Somebody tell me uh, in, in in real physical terms. What does that mean about the ages in Florida? Let's pretend like this is true. There's a lot of young people and old people. There's a lot of young people and old people. Nobody really in the middle, right? Just kind of sounds close to right. There's all you know, Boca del Rey shuffleboard, right? And then there's you know, Daytona something surfing. Right, so it sounds like it could be true. Probably not nobody in here, but in my alternate reality, there is nobody in the middle. So where would the mean be? Where's the mean? Taken from both of them. This is my population. It just looks weird, but where's the mean? Right in the middle. If I average everybody together, it should come out to about there. So what Chebyshev realized is, and what he says relates to any distribution ever. Anything you can imagine, any set of numbers you can imagine, have to actually follow this. So it's powerful. I say that because the first part of it is lame. So I want to make sure he gets his due. If anybody leaves early, it's like, oh, it's lame. Uh, if you go one step out, if I go up and down one standard deviation, so this will be minus one plus one standard deviation. You guys with me? So take one step up, one step down. You catch at least. 0% of the data. <laughs> I told you something. Within one standard deviation of the mean, there's at least 0% of the data. Now, that's lame. There's at least nobody. Oh, thanks. How long did it take you to figure that one out? That's going out on a limb. Well, here's the power of it. If you go one more step out, if you go one more step out, so plus two sigma and minus two sigma, you always catch at least 75% of the data. That's powerful. So whatever data you're looking at, if you calculate the mean and you calculate the standard deviation, you know that 75% of them at least will be within two steps of the mean. That is really useful. So for airlines, if you know uh, the average hip width and you know the standard deviation of hip widths, then you know if you make your seat a certain size, you'll only have the probability of having this many people upset at you. Do you guys follow? And actually, that's a true thing. They figured out how wide your seat should be, so they get fewer complaints. All right, you guys kind of, so that's an immediate practical application. Uh, so that's within two standard deviations, there's at least 75%. Within three standard deviations, there's at least 89%. So real quick, just to, just to, we're not going to go through uh, his derivation because it took him a long ass time to figure this out. But just to see why it kind of makes sense. How could I escape? Could I escape? Let's say these are, I'm throwing nets out. I'm going to throw this other net out. And here I am. I'm, I'm the data. And I'm trying to escape. So I'm just going to move further away. I'm like, aha. Uh -huh. I'm going to go over here and over there. I'm going to, aha, uh -huh. I moved away. But the minute I do that, what changes? The standard deviation gets bigger correspondingly. So it kind of makes sense why I can't make within two be nothing. Because if I try to move them further apart, my standard deviation gets bigger. So the more you try to get away from me, the faster I go in a way, right? So you ain't going to get away from me, basically, is what I'm saying. 
All right, maybe. So that, that's kind of like a, that's my side note, believe it or not. It's not even in the book. So, so the reason that that's very vague, it says at least zero, that's remarkably vague. And then at least this, at least that, is because it, it works for any distribution ever. And any that will ever exist, it works. So that, you know, that's a pretty good thing for he did. And they didn't even say his name in the book. I'm like, damn. Anyway, so empirical rule only works with normal distribution. So why should these numbers be more precise? Because a normal curve, what's it look like? Can you draw it in the air? There, see, we know what it looks like. Chevy Chev is, what could it look like? We don't know. Any day that could look like it. It could look like anything and it would still work. But this should be a lot more specific because it has to look like that. And actually, there's even more to it than just the general shape. There's other uh, restrictions on it that we're not going to get too deep into. Um, but here's what empirical rule says. If I go, well, that's beautiful. If I go one step up and down, let me, let me see if you guys can handle this. Let me call the mean zero. So what, what am I using here? If I go one standard deviation up and I put a one there, what are these actually? Z scores. Good. They're numbers of standard deviations, which is what the Z score is, right? It's how many standard deviations away. If you're negative, you're below the mean. So what, what empirical says, if you go one step out, there is 68%. It's actually 68.26. Let's, let's just make it 68. So it's not at least. It's not at most. It's exactly 68%. If you have a normally distributed probability, it's going to have to be this. If you go two steps out, 95% of your data is in there. So that's like I was saying earlier. That's why we say anything outside of two only happens 5% of the time, right? If 95% of the stuff is in here, how much is out here? 5%. And then three sounds like a soap commercial to me. Three is 99.7%. What was that old commercial? 99 and 4400 percent pure. Thank you. Somebody remembers. So let me, let me show you an immediate real-world application, and then we'll head out. So the average height of men is about 69 inches. Standard deviation is about, two, we'll say 2.5. Can't remember if it's 2.5 or 2.8. We'll make it a nice number. And we know heights are something that it makes sense would be normally distributed because the whole idea of the word normal is what normally happens. And it's normally related to, normally, 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 uh, to physical things like length, height, width. Because I would expect most people to be within the mean, very close to the mean height. I don't see every day, I don't walk around and see little people or, you know, minute bowl or something like that, all right? But you guys know you know who minute bowl is. Who, who would it be now? Even Hakeem Olajuwon, I can't say that because you guys don't know the script. Very tall person, seven foot tall person. Does that happen very often to you? No. You normally see people probably close to your own height, all right? Um, so this is normally distributed. So, uh, if I want to know what percentage is between, uh, you can do it, Jeff, 64 and 74, uh, what I can do is kind of plot it. Here's my mean. What's one step up? One step up. So that would be a z-score of 1. It's crazy. What's one more step up? 74. So that's two steps up. What's one step down? 66.5. So that's negative 1. That's one step down. What's another step down? So what percentage, since this is normally distributed, what percentage is between 64 and 74? 95% of people are between that, right? Mm -hmm. So can you, all right, you guys are cool with that? So the percentage between uh, 64 and 74 
is 95%. So what's the percentage above 74? No? Two and a half. If there's 95 in here, how much is out here? Five. So how much is up there? Because this is symmetric. Do you guys see that? So there's 5% outside, how much is on one side? 2.5%. So if I wanted 2.5% of all men to have to duck through the door to get out of the room, I, I want no more than 2.5%. I don't want to get more complaints than that, but I can live with that many complaints. How tall would I make the door? <coughs> 74 freaking inches tall, right? I want you to understand this is an immediate, practical, building construction consideration that statistics helps you with. You can't make a door fit everybody necessarily. It depends on how tall your ceiling is. So you're like, well, can we live with it here? How many complaints would we get? Well, two and a half percent of men would complain. Oh, you know, we'll look at fine. Well, they should be able to freaking duck. They're probably used to that. Maybe. All right, sorry. I'm exactly like the average height, so I'm the right in the middle. Uh, okay. I think that's plenty. So, so next time I'm going to bring you z-score charts and we're going to work on this. That's the next big important thing to get down is how to work with this kind of stuff. Two fair dies, you could get a one and a one, a one and a two, a one and a three, a one and a four. That's your sample space. Exactly. There were 36 things. And then part C will be a little bit easier because then you can see. So if you do it like this, blah blah blah. And there's a two one here, right? And there's a two two. So they said at most three then you would know it would be everything except these two. I mean, not, but if it said at least three, it would be uh, this and up, so it would only leave one out. If it said at most three, then it would be only these three, three out of 36. So if you make your sample space, that becomes really easy to answer. Oh, good. All right, where was it? Oh, okay. Okay.